Gordon Pepper, and this is another UBA Vixens title match, and I have the champion here, Hermie Hannibal. Hello, Hermie. Hello. How you doing? I'm pretty good. A little bit cold, but I'm good. Oh, it's you and I have been here before numerous times. Numerous times. It's and good, you it's right. good to see you again. <laughs> it's a pleasure as always. You're going to be defending again. What's going through your mind? Oh, just show strikes. Hope make my spears. The usual. Now, you spoke to me earlier, and I'm going to use your words against you. Part of the reason why you want to hold on to the belt is to, quote, unquote, keep the belt away from those young people. You're still thinking about that? No, that's not what I said. That's what I'm trying to uh, keep up with the young people. Are you trying to keep <laughs> up with the young people? Yes. Oh, look, it's a young person. Hey, Amber. <laughs> Hi. So, uh, this is Amber Milan, by the way. I got the name right? Yes? Now, first of all, this is your first title match opportunity. How does it feel? Uh, it feels good. I feel definitely excited. I'm ready to have some fun and bowl my best. And, yeah, bring, try to bring the belt home. So you see this lady over here who's been here many, many times on this. What's your strategy? My strategy, uh, just bowl and have fun. Don't overthink because then it just gets in the way of things. Just have fun. Strikes will come. So if I just get the 10th pin, like everyone understands, just make the spear. <laughs> That's actually a great piece of advice. A lot of people come in overthinking. So I wish both of you good luck. Uh, shake hands and come out bowling. All right, this is Gordon Pepper, and I am here with a very, very, very special guest from the UBA, Mr. CEO himself, Mr. Clutch, Mr. 300, Mr. Everything, Mr. Ty Nell Tate. Hello, Ty. All right, good evening. How are you doing, everyone? Hello. How you doing? You doing good? I'm doing good. I uh, bowled today, a tour stop, and I uh, just shot over here to Whitestone to show my support, you know, commentate this match, uh, you know, trying to get out a little more. Um, to these matches and stuff and just, you know, make myself known, meet everybody, let everybody know who I am. Well, Amber Milan wants everybody to know who she is. She is the challenger going up against the Vixens champion, and she, the champion is a Hall of Famer, the Herminator, Hermie Hannibal. Talk to me about her. Uh, Hermie is just the truth um, here in New York City. Um, you know, New York City Hall of Famer, UBA Hall of Famer, and uh, she's just uh, pretty dominant on the lanes. Just the stone at eight pin. So, so uh, see what type of adjustment she makes off that. But uh, her, Hermie is, uh, you know, she's just an all-around competitor. You know, she bowls everything, anything she can. You know, she, just just a competitor all around. That's that's why she's a Hall of Famer. And now this is how a Vixens match works. For everybody that's new to the UBA, hello. This is a best of seven matchup. Whoever gets the four games wins. In this case, if Hermie Hannibal wins, she successfully defends the Northeast Vixens title. If Amber Milan wins and you already have a King saying, let's go Amber. And uh, so if King is happy and Amber wins for it, then she becomes the champ, the new champ. And for her, it would be her first time. So right now, Hermie up there in the second frame, both competitors with spares in the first frame. Hermie up, here's that first shot. That ball looks good, maybe a little high or maybe a little mixed, strike. You know, it's funny, during practice time, talk to me about this a little bit because both you and I were looking at practice and it looked like the balls were hooking out of the building and it doesn't look like that now. What do you think? Um, it's probably a little transition. They practiced for 10 minutes and um you know, they kind of, you know, pushed a lot of the oil. Whatever oil is out in the heads, they pushed it down. So their ball's pretty much holding. I guess they made some adjustments off of their practice shots. So, um, you know, that's why these two are here. You know, they make the right adjustments, and uh, they pretty, they're hitting the pocket pretty pretty good. Yeah, yeah and both women having no problems hitting the pocket. Both women having no problem striking. Both ladies with a strike as we go into the third frame. And one of the things that I always tell everybody is that anytime that there's a Vixens match, expect high scoring and usually expect more high scoring from the women than the guys. Usually, how accurate do you feel that that is? I, I feel it's accurate. The um, women are, uh, they, they're more fierce and you know, they just want to uh, beat up on each other. The, the guy, guys, you, yeah, guys usually, uh, they usually cancel out, you know, um, but, the, but the women are, they're more fun to watch and you know, women know that, and you know they're used to just trying to put on a show, I guess, for you know, for their for their watchers and and uh, their supporters.
King says carry that. She does. Amber two in a row. Hermie looking for two in a row. Doesn't get it. Four pin. The way the lanes are playing, you're probably going to see a lot of four pins. Um, it seems like the uh, heads, they're not burnt, but they're, they're very, the, the oil is a little light. So the ball is really much, pretty much hooking a little bit off the arrows. So you might see a lot of four pins uh, in, this, in this match. Right now, Amber, the challenger with a quick lead, regardless of whether or not Hermie's despair, she will though. So right now, Amber with a double. Hermie right now going Dutch. And we going into the fourth frame, Amber up by a quick 10. Hermie now up, going on lane 33. Now I know it may look like it's 34 uh, on the feed, but it is 33. But I think that we got it right this time. I know on the screen it is backwards where we're looking at it. So Hermie right now had a strike there first round. has got a strike here this time around. So Ty, what changes does Hermie need to make on lane 34? Uh, she probably she probably needs to roll the ball out a little more. Um, she's really just it's really just sh she's short arming it a little bit, so she's might have to just extend a little bit, just get the ball to roll pretty much uh, fur further down the lane, and uh, she has to just watch her break break point, you know. Or she can ball change, um, but uh, she did use two different bowling balls in practice, so if she ball changes um, that might help, but. She's not really too far away from the pocket, so she's just gonna probably stay with the same ball, but she, I think she needs to just, you know, have a little more length. Uh, well, Hermie has not gotten two in a row. Hermie, however, also hasn't done what Amber just did, which is throw a big gaping split. In this case, uh, she's got a six, seven, ten up there. See if she can make the spare right now, looking for the conversion. If she gets it, she will stay in the lead. If she doesn't get it, depending on how many pins she get, Hermie may take the lead right back. However, this looks pretty good. Oh! That was very close. That was very close. It seems like 34 um, is hooking a tad bit more than 33. So uh, um, both bowlers are probably aware of that. So um, a small mistake can cost them. Though, so. Yeah, right now, a little small mistake has Amber coughing up the lead back over to Hermie. Hermie right now should be up by at least seven, if not more, going into the fifth frame right now. Amber up. No, she does not need to make an adjustment here. Let's just hope that she doesn't compensate here. And she uh, she compensates a little bit there. While Amber's looking to make the spare, I got a what's up, everyone, from your current Northeast Heavyweight Champion, Keith Perry. Hey, Keith. Now, Keith had a tour stop today which his team I don't think won. And the reason why I mentioned that, Tynell, you also had a tour stop today, correct? Yes, we had a tour stop today our in a conference match, uh, Long Island District uh, versus the Brooklyn Queens District uh, at Garden City. I must ask, how did BC Crew, which is your team, how did they do? We did, we did, we did good. We took 38 points out of uh, 40. That's it? Yeah, that's it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Now, now, BC Crew uh, has a lot of work to do. And you know, oh, Keith Perry has corrected me. We won 30 to 10. Keith, and how come your team said that you lo that they lost on social media? Keith, your team needs to get their act together. So Syndicate with Syndicate with the win. Uh, King is telling Amber, wipe those frames away. Oh, it's okay. Let's go. Technically, it is okay. However. Hermie just figured out how to strike on lane 34. That spells trouble early for Amber. Yeah, Hermie did exactly what I uh, said she needed to do. She really kind of pushed it out uh, a little bit outside of 10, and uh, the ball just held up, and she, you know, she got the four pin out. So now she just can't lose 33. If she lose 33, well, she got 33, so she's flushing 33. So if she finds 34, and you know, when Hermie finds both lanes, then it's you know, usually trouble. Um, I've seen um, Amber um, bowl a lot, and uh, actually, you know, Amber is a, a, a UBA champion. She's uh, she won the uh, Northeast and Holy Alliance uh, back in back in February. So, and she bowls very well. I think I bowl next to her, um, and uh, she throws the ball really well. Um, so, you know, she she's a fighter. She's not going to give up. I uh, see her game. Yeah, she's gonna have to, she's doing the same thing that Hermie did originally, so she's just gonna have to roll the ball out a little more. Uh, I don't know what her arsenal is to do any type of ball changes, um, 
but uh, that might help as well. Um, it, it at least set herself up for the next game if uh, Hermy, you know, kind of blows this game away. Emma really needs to just try to find 34, get comfortable with something um, that she knows that's going to give us some length, and uh, she'll um, she should be able to keep up and, and, and do well. And right now, oh, I thought she was going to make that one. She does not. But you're right, Amber did win the Northeast Unholy Alliance this year. I believe there is over 250 teams that bowled in that. So to be first out of 250 teams, that is an accomplishment right there. As you said, it shows that she's got grit and she's got stamina. The one thing she needs to do right now is adjust because she came out on fire at the beginning, took a very quick lead, and now open, 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 going into the seventh frame. Herbie right now, who was trailing in this match, uh, is up potentially now by 50 pins at this point. Amber's got to do something to cut the damage here. Ooh, she threw that one out. Ooh. Yeah, that one just got out to the draw too early and then cut back. So, um, you know, she's trying to use the same line on both lanes, but it's, it's not really working. So she just really just has to, she doesn't look too comfortable now. So she just has to get, get back to her uh, comfort zone. And um, and just just leave leave makeables, you know. That's that's the key, you know. If you can't strike all the time. Just leave stuff that that are makeable. You know? uh, that's true. And I'm getting a little message here from. Yeah, we we've got bell holders chatting all over the place here. We have a current Northeast welterweight champion chirping in, Julio Hernandez. Yes, sir. We won on Holy. What's up, fellas? We're doing pretty good here, Julio. Uh, Julio, I believe, coming back from upstate New York in a tournament of his own. He's going to be looking to defend his title. I believe we're going to be covering that in May. I believe uh, coming up, Hermie right now, her streak of striking is over. Now Amber needs to have her streak of opens over very quickly also. Or this one's going to be done relatively quickly if it's not done relatively quickly already. Assuming that Hermie makes a spare, she'll be up by around 58 pins, almost 60 pins going into the eighth frame. And basically Amber's running out of frames. I'm assuming that Hermie's going to make the spare here, and that's a really bad assumption on my part. Oops. Oopsie. So with that chop, uh, Hermie has a 46-pin lead. Uh, it's very comfortable, so she, she's really cruising right now. Uh, Amber just has to find something these next three frames to set herself up for game two. Uh, she needs, that's why it's a best of seven. You know, She needs to just wipe this game away and uh, just try to come back strong as she, as she did uh, in the first couple of frames of this game. Yeah, Amber's got to go back to what she did well at the beginning of the game. I don't know what she's doing, and I don't Well, this game may not be completely over yet. Not if Hermie wants to let Amber back into this one, and it's, you never want to do that, Ty, and, and you know this as well as I do. It is very dangerous to let somebody back into a match, and, and all of a sudden, this one's not over. Yeah, it's not. Statistically, it's not over. You know, Amber can uh, off the sheet with 190, and Hermie has to close frames to at least get her in the high 190s. And uh, she has back-to-back -back open, so. Uh, oh, she does not have back-to-back -back open. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. My apologies. I spoke too soon. So with that, with that conversion of the 210, uh, that, that puts Hermie in. You know, she get total pin count. She just has to stay clean. That's that's basically it. Oh, Hermie with a huge clutch spare. What that means is that if Amber goes out the door for 190 in order for her to win, she's gonna need uh, what Hermie did in the seventh frame for her to do it a couple more times. First things first, it's gotta be a strike. Now maybe, oh, well, she got the strike. She's nodding her head and I, I don't know what that look is exactly. Either appreciation or I don't know. So looking at some of these comments right now, uh, Dana, Dana Ward, White still makes us a fair playground. Yes, it does. Uh, something from Fit Beans, let's go Amber, royalty on the lanes. King, sheesh, let's go Hermie. Yeah, Hermie converted that spare. And again, you are talking about a Hall of Fame here, here in Hermie Hannibal. She's, she's got the goods. She is one of the best Vixens. As, as Ty Nellis said, UBA Hall of Famer, one of the best, best Vixens champs ever. And it's got to take a very tall order to get that belt away from Hermie. And Amber needs this to double, and she does not. And I actually thought that it was a shot of it going down. Ty, what's your thoughts? Uh, well, she's got that one out. It looked like it hung up on her, um, her hand and just didn't recover well. You know, she did tickle the head pin, but not enough pin action to really carry. Um, you know, she spares off the sheet for a 170 game. Um, 
Hermie pretty much has that with pin count. So um, yeah, so Amber just needs to get you know get comfortable and uh, just watch her ball reaction and watch her break point, and she just has to follow through a little better uh, than she is, and she, she'll be all right. Yeah, Amber pretty much, I completely agree with Ty, no. Amber pretty much, get that first game out. Sometimes you get a little bit of butterflies, especially with the, the two crazy people here talking behind you. One person definitely a lot crazier than the other. Hermie right now, and then the real crazy person I'm talking about is me. Hermie right now with the strike, that mathematically ends the game. Now, Ty, let's just say you're Hermie in this situation. You know the game is over. Do you try to find a mark because you're a little bit shaky at the end of game one, or do you try to maybe throw some different equipment out there? What's going on in your mind right now? I would, I would, I would test a few things out, you know, to, to, to just try not to uh, to lose your um, your rhythm for the next game to see see what's working. Um, she did throw those back-to-back -back eight counts. Uh, those were probably uh, mental mistakes. Um, probably doesn't have nothing to do with the lanes, but. Um, but yeah, she just left a six count now, so she barely hit the head pin. So I mean, both bowlers need to probably just move a little more right, just kind of pipe it up 10. But uh, it's all going to come down to speed. Um, you know, keeping the ball on the right side because uh, the lanes are jumping a little bit. They're not completely dry, but they, they, are, uh, they do have a little bit of hook. Let's see if she makes a spare here. She will. And she's got one more fill to go. So Hermie, again, with good count, will be in the 200s, which, again, for the Hall of Fame, you certainly do expect that. Amber right now, again, trying to figure out Whitestone. A number of people have said Whitestone, the great equalizer. And sometimes Whitestone's a little, little bit like potpourri. You don't know what you're going to get. And right now, neither bowlers have completely figured it out, though I'm sure Hermie liked that last shot that she threw. So, Ty, what, again, going through your mind here in terms of what Hermie's doing, you're not thinking at all about, well, I'm looking at her line. Let's see if there's anything that I can do to wreck it at this point, or are you? Oh, maybe, maybe not. Let's see what Amber's line is right now. Uh, she's throwing it out a little bit outside. Not sure outside works. It seemed to me like down and in for her was better than outside. What do you think? Yeah, yeah down, down and in is good. She, uh, just like I said about Hermie earlier, her length has to be um, very, she has to be a little more accurate with her length, uh, not short arm it, because when the lanes do hook a little early, um, you can't really short arm anything because it was just turned. Unless it's plastic or something that you, you, know, you really know that gets you down the lane so you can uh, keep it on the right side. Now that's a better roll. She rolled that one. I agree with you there. Even though she didn't make the spare, I think that style of roll, I think, will do her better in game two. And it's probably a good thing game two is starting now. I'm sure she'd like to forget game one. At the end of game one, Hermie Hannibal 206, Amber Milan 146. Hermie is up one zip. So now while we're setting this up, so since. Uh, since Amber started game one, Hermie shall be starting game two. It's, it's interesting because obviously the champion decides who goes first, and she wanted Amber to start. A little bit of sportsmanship there, or what do you think? Um, yeah, she just, I guess she, uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess she wanted her to start, I guess you could say sportsmanship, you know. Hermie starts off with a strike on, on her good lane. Yeah, that, that definitely seems to be like her good lane. Amber right now is sort of looking, trying to sort of contemplate some things, which, you know, you can, you can understand. You just shot a 146 game one. There's nowhere to go but up. So trying to figure this out, except Amber. She's so deep in thought in terms of figuring it out, she almost pulled on the other lane. All right, we got her back in the correct lane. Uh, Levi Johnson, is this Whitestone, New York? Yes, it is. So this is Whitestone Lanes over in Whitestone, New York. And Amber right now, that ball looks good on the roll. Doesn't get it completely, seven pin. She got it to where she needed to get it. Um, just, just didn't carry that shot. 
but um, it was a good shot. She, she looked like she knows where she needs to put, place the ball. All she got to do is just hope, and, hope she carries. Keep her fingers in the, in the ball, you know, um, make your spares. You know, you got to lead all the make moves that you got. You got to make those, you know, especially when you're bowling against Hermie. Uh, yeah, you, you cannot make too many mistakes against Hermie. Julio being silly with me saying, Gordon, no yelling. Well, I needed to make sure that Amber was on the right lane so she can get the spare, and she does. So it was not yelling, it was barking for somebody's attention. Not a lot of people have actually heard me yell as in yelling in anger. Tynell hasn't actually ever heard me yell in anger. I've never lost it in a UBA uh, situation. Yeah, and, and I will say this, if I ever lose it, it is spectacular. Spectacular. That's all I have to say on that. I'll tell Tynell the last time that I lost it later. But, uh, but no, it's... Trust me, you, you, haven't, you haven't heard me yell. It's, it is spectacular. Levi, it's been a while since I bowled at Whitestone, but one thing I remembered about Whitestone lanes is that they lanes hook a lot. Uh, uh, yes, they definitely do. If you, if you don't put a hand in the ball and if you're not falling through, your ball's going to go into orbit. Tynell, what do you think about that comment? Um, I mean, it, it probably depends. They, they do hook. Um, it probably depends on, like, when you're really here, like on the weekends, I mean, I don't, you know, they, they, they tend to hook. They don't, probably not putting that much oil out on the lanes or whatever, but but I bowled here in the tournament a few weeks back, and they, and they were they were pretty fine. I mean, they've gotten better over, over the years. So um, he's probably mentioning, uh, he's probably right. I would say he's correct. When I bowled here 10 years ago, you know, action matches and everything, they, they kind of hooked. You know, but now they, they've gotten way better. You know, the lanes are getting taken care of. They're getting more action here, more bowling. So they're going to take care of the bowlers and, and put oil out on the lanes and, and you know, it's be satisfying. I, you bring up a really good point, which is one of the places... Whitestone takes care of the UBA bowlers that are here, I know, especially what Tynell said. There's been a lot of times where they all put out oil and, again, props to the management over at Whitestone Lanes. Uh, they know what they're doing, and they do treat the UBA bowlers uh, right. Whitestone opened 24 hours, and you don't see many lanes. I only know one other bowling alley that's actually, that's not true. I know one in New Jersey. I know one in PA. But uh, bowling alleys that open 24 hours are very rare around here. And Hermie right now had a doubles, now leaving a two-pin. Still has got a quick lead in game two. Yeah, so the way I see the lanes playing, 34 is hooking a little earlier than 33. So 33 has more more um, back end um, oil. So if you miss in, it's just gonna go straight. Um, you know, Hermie did leave a bucket uh, at one point. And um, so basically um, the ball, what they call it, it, it backs up. So on 33, the ball's backing up. 34, the lane is pretty much like hook stop. So it's hooking. So you really gotta try to get it through the heads and find that right area and break point um, and, and keep it in the pocket on, on lane 34. So right now, Hermie Hannibal, again, with a little bit of a lead. Uh, not, not too much 11-pin lead. Amber has a chance to remove that lead with a couple of strikes here. Hermie with a nine with a nine spare in the third. Amber up in her third frame right now. Strike could be really nice for her. That ball looks good. Ooh, seven, uh, ten pin. Ten pin up there, yipes. That ball looked good to me. Yeah, Am Amber's really, uh, she's really looking comfortable now. She's throwing the ball really good, especially on 34. And she, she liked it off her hand. As soon as it left her hand, she liked it. And she just didn't carry the 10. Well, I, I liked it also. I did too. Uh, Levi, yeah, Whitestone's definitely still 24 hours. Back in his day, they were too. Excellent. I'm, I'm curious as to where Levi is now. And just try, sort of curious now uh, where he is, seeing if there's any uh, alleys nearby with him that's got 24-hour lanes. Yeah, Amber would probably like to have that pin back, but wow, that was a good shot. Nothing you can do about that. Right now, Hermie up by 12, going into the fourth frame of game two. For those of you that just joined us, I'm Gordon Pepper, along with the UBA CEO, Mr. Tynell Tate. We are watching a very fun Vixens match, Hermie Hannibal against Amber Milan. This is game two. Hermie has taken game one. Amber is looking at her first strike of game two going. That ball's got to hold a little bit out of trouble. 6-10. Yeah, that one kind of jumped on her. It looked like she tried to play it the same as lane 34, but, uh, you know, they, they playing a little different, so you might have to do some different things. Um, so that's what makes it challenging. You know, um, you know they got to make key shots. Uh, 
just know know your bone equipment and um, just 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 hope the pins fall your way. That's pretty much it. Well, hopefully it is. I mean, both both bowlers right now trying to play around with the angle of entry. Both bowlers very good on the spares. Amber, I'll say this: Amber did have a bunch of opens, but almost all of them were splits. I believe both of them, with the exception, I think, of a chop from Hermie, they made all the makeable spares. That is that is correct. Amber just missed the. Um, she had the uh, the bucket with the seven pin. Uh, one of the frames, I think she chopped it at May May four. But, uh, so Hermie Hermie left a four pin. So um, you know. Like I said earlier, four pins are going to be left a lot, especially on 34 if they're hooking a little early. Well, Hermie right now uh, is in the cap seat a little bit. Before we go back to that, let's go look at Levi Johnson's latest text here. She, he's in Sarasota, Florida. No bowling alley there. That's 24 hours. I don't know the Florida area that well. I do know, I believe the UBA did have a district down in Florida, if I am not mistaken, sir. Yeah, we had a district in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, and a lot of people may not know right now, but um, we have a, f a few Florida teams that are interested and have uh, submitted like franchise registration forms and they're trying to build. So it's probably going to be in the um, uh, Kissimmee area. So we're, we're trying to really just build back Florida the way it used to, the way it used to be some years ago. And, um, you know, just everyone stay tuned for that. So we, we're trying to put Florida on the map. We have uh, Georgia uh, pretty much set. We will have a Georgia district next year. Um, there, there's a bunch of teams in Georgia already. I'm glad to know that they have their own district. I believe that's uh, Deep South is a number of those teams from Georgia. So it's great that they have that. I'd love to see the Southeast expanding. So Levi, definitely check it out. I don't know how far away you are, you are from the Kissimmee, Florida area, but definitely check it out. Definitely get yourself on the UBA team when we're going back down there. We have Harvey Hernandez, slim. Well, she gets herself out of trouble. Leaves a 6'10". Could have been a 7 up there also. Yeah, Amber just ball changed. Uh, it looks like a, a bowling ball that goes, goes a little longer for her, but um, she just probably short-armed it. But um, she still looks a little comfortable. She's closing her frames, which will keep her in the game. So that's that's just the key right now. I believe I said he's around two and a half hours away, and he will. Uh-oh. You know, we said before about, uh, Gordon's just a jinx. I am a big old jinx. I said, hey, everybody's making their makeable spares. Nope. So right now, Amber already being pressured by Hermie off the double. Amber right now still does not have a strike game two. That open's not gonna help her cause. Going into the second half of game two, Hermie up by at least 26, possibly 36. So again, Amber's gotta figure out how to throw strikes and she's gotta figure it out relatively quickly. Sure is. Ah, it's not for lack of trying. She's throwing a good ball. The pins just are not falling. Talk to me here. Yeah, she's. She's. I mean, like I said, she's comfortable. They're not falling her way right now. Um, but you know, she. You can't really when you're comfortable and you're not carrying you and you're hitting the pocket. You. It's really. You really can't do too much. Too much different things or try anything different. Um, especially when the game is not completely out. You know. That does not help. No, nah, she just missed a seven pin. So now I, I don't know if she's, uh, if she's just frustrated that she's not carrying, you know, because I, I know normally a lot of people, when they're still in the games and they don't carry, it, it does get kind of frustrating. But, um, you know, you just got to shake that off and just, just, just try something. Now she's on the open. So this is probably the best time to really just think about trying something, you know. Well, well, it is. I mean, the one thing that Hermie Hannibal's doing is she's doing two things. Number one, she's trying a whole bunch of things. And number two, I mean, with ball changes and, and moving and stuff. But number two, she's not really feeling threatened at all by Amber at this point. So now she's got a whole half of second game to make any adjustments that she wants. Because all she needs to do really is make spares. Because as we've seen in game two, Amber has not yet figured out how to consistently throw strike shot. Right, yeah, she's not she's not completely out the game, so so yeah, you're right. So I've I've seen enough Hermie Hannibal matches to know that's what she's thinking in her mind right now, going, hmm. Now I got four frames. I can figure out what does this do, what does this do, what does this do? 
and she's up right now by a believer on 30, uh, sorry, 47 pins. As we're going into the eighth frame, and there's a, I'm sorry, into the seventh frame, and there's a strike. Yeah, Hermie found that left lane. She's playing a little tighter now. Um, she, she ball changed as well, so she's, she's playing that lane a little tighter because if you leak it a little bit on 33, uh, like I said earlier, the, there's a lot of oil in the back end, so if you kind of leak it, it won't, it won't recover. So she's playing a little more tighter and just hoping that she doesn't ring 10. Um, so, she, you know, she's a Hall of Famer. She's smart like that. She's reading her equipment. And she's knowing how the lanes play and where the break point is. So she, she's, in, she's cruising right now in the comfort zone. And that's what makes it very dangerous for Amber because Amber right now is trying to figure out what to do at least now for game two. And that's not the right answer. Meanwhile, Hermes already trying to set up and figure out game three. Then again, when you are a champion, and this game has got nothing to do with Amber, you know, this is her first time in the big stage here. But this has got a lot to do with Hermie. Hermie, as you said, is reading the lanes very well, and this is what she does, and this is why she's held on to the belt. Yeah, I, yeah, she, she's, um, and like I said, this is, uh, Amber is, uh, I think, did you say this is her first state? This is, a, is this her first title show? This is her first title match. This, this is the first time she's been around here with the mics, with the cameras and the lights, and you and I chatting away over here. She knows she's being watched worldwide, you know, so, you know, I can, I can understand the jitters, you know. But, uh, every, like I said, win or lose, everyone knows her game. Uh, I, this is my first year really seeing her bowl, you know, she's it, within the UBA now. You know, I think this is her second year in the UBA. But um, she, she, she's really, like, improving her game, and I, I kind of like her game, you know. Yeah, Chris, Chris Harris and Levi both telling Amber to move right. She does, and there it goes. Not only did she move right, she moved right down and in. She didn't squirt that ball out there. Yeah, see, yeah, Chris Harris. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to say that. Um, I'm sitting here just looking at Amber, and I, I kind of want to tell her to move right. You know what I'm saying? But I, I gotta be biased. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, uh, I'm just a, a CEO. You know, I, I gotta, I gotta root for both of them. You know. But yeah, she does. She definitely, especially on. On 34, she moves right and keeps her speed up. She'll be okay. She, it doesn't give her much room for error if she moves right on 34. So um, hopefully, you know, she she can figure that out, you know, before it's too late because we are already in game two already. So, you know, you don't want to be down 2-0 and put more pressure on yourself. This case is down and in all day. Well, Miss Case is absolutely right. Hermie right now, and that's what Hermie has been down and in all day. and. Right now, really, strike, spare, strike, spare, strike, spare. From my memory serves me, she's only had one open, and that was in game one, and that was when she had the game well in hand, and then converted a split to make sure that that didn't, so that that didn't cascade from a trickle to a downpour. But again, this is what Hall of Famers do. And throw the ball way outside. Sometimes Hall of Famers will do that too. Yipes. Yeah, she, she, she did exactly what I said you couldn't do. You, can, you can't. You can't you can't leak it right because it's not going to recover. So she she didn't look like she had any fingers in that one. But you know it's a makeable spare. She's uh she's in the driver's seat. She makes this um, and gets uh, seven pins in the ten frame. Uh, she she shuts out Amber. So um. yeah, Chris Harris by the way is absolutely oh that's I'm not sure how, how much interesting this is going to be. So let, let's look at the numbers here. Well, you know this could get a little interesting. Amber's got a one, 100 in the seventh. If she goes out, it's a 190. Hermie's got a 173. So when she had a 100 in the seventh, the last frame, on the, the last game on the strike as well. That's true. The strike out for 190. But uh, but yeah, it's a lot of pressure on Amber. But uh, she doubles here. It puts a little, uh, a little pressure on Hermie. Hermie just got to close her frame. You know, she has to fill in 18 pins. I was gonna say if if Hermie, oh well, never mind. Forget that thought. So to say, if Amber goes out the door, Hermie still has to show up and not do what she did last frame. That being said, it doesn't matter now. The game's now mathematically over. Yeah, her, uh, Hermie's going to go up 2-0. Um, uh, Amber is, uh, she, you know, she finds herself in a hole now. But, um, you know, she, she's, still, she's still not out. Hopefully she can learn off these mistakes that she's making on just this particular lane. 
Oh, and, and again, I'll go right back to Chris Harris here. The more right she can play, the harder it is to beat. Levi's in agreement. Levi is now a royalty on the Lanes fam, which is always fun. It's always fun for different people all over the place to be fans, uh, fans regardless. So that's always cool to see. That being said, Amber, in order for her to attract more fans, has got to start piecing this all together. And, and again, the, uh, the Opens have absolutely killed her in the mid-game. First game, she actually had the lead at the beginning in game one. Then she had a string of four Opens. This game, she's got a st string of four Opens in five frames. That ball looks good to me. And it is. Gets the mixer. Now she's got to do that consistently, and then she's got to figure that out on lane 34. Ty, you agree with me on that? Um, yeah, 34 is just more about her speed, you know. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, it doesn't look like she wants to throw the ball harder, so she switched bowling balls. It, the bowling ball does go a little longer, but uh, the, way, the way the lanes are playing, uh, speed is still going to be a factor no matter what. So, by the way, Gordon, trivia question will be coming up. And... You know, I was actually had an original question I was going to do. I'm going to throw that one out because we sort of have an Unholy Alliance thing going on. So, category is going to be the World Championship Series and the Unholy Alliance. So, I'll let you guys go through your memory banks here. And you guys are probably going to go, oh, no, Gordon's going to give us a stumper. I'll give you enough easiness on this so that you should know what the answer is. There will be enough easiness here. I think. We'll try. We'll figure it out. Anyway, Amber with the nine pin looking to pick this up. That'll put her in 146 if she does, and she will. Yeah, Whitestone has not been Amber's friend right now. It hasn't been Hermes' friend for the most part either. I mean, this has really been a grinder match. Hermes just made less mistakes. This is something there. Chris is saying she needs something cleaner. I don't disagree with you. Maybe something in the arsenal that she needs to pull out. Hermie, however, has pulled out a strike. So she's looking around here trying to figure this out. Two balls left to go at the end of game two, and then we'll figure out game three. And this is going to go down into the annals, at least at the beginning of a good learning lesson for Amber. But she's not completely out of this. Tynell's right. You don't want to go down 2-0. However, if you win the third game, at least you're only down 2-1. Another win, you can tie it up at 2. You definitely don't want to be down 3-0. And you do not want to be down a 3-0 to Hermie Hannibal. Ever. Uh, not exactly. Hermie, yeah, Hermie just... Um Hermie just switched bowling balls. She moved a little bit left, and she played like straight up 15. The ball just held. Uh, that line is not likely to carry the 10, but uh, she's, she's trying some things right now. Will she make the spare? Yeah, ooh. I was about to say, will she make the spare? Nope, but she does. So 193, good enough. At the end of game two, Hermie Hannibal 193. Amber Milan 146, Hermie up to zip. Now again, you're, now let's just say you're Amber. What, what do you need to do here? What, what sort of changes do you need, need to make? Obviously, everybody's saying move right, move right, move right. What else? Um, I mean, she's she's made. I mean, makeable spares. Like she's, she doesn't. She's not in in a in a in a zone where she's gonna strike all day. So you know, gotta make the spares. Hermes just get a little bit more strikes than her. Uh, Hermie threw a couple of doubles that game, so that would kind of put her in the driver's seat. But um, Amber just got to keep making the spare. She's not going to be able to strike if she can't throw the, if she can't find, figure out the lanes uh, and, and how her bowling balls reacted. Um, perfect example. Um, today I bowled my tour stop, and the lanes were playing the same same exact way it is now. I was on 19 and 20 at Garden City. And my left lane was hooking a little way, like five to ten boards, five to seven boards more than the left lane. So I bowled 176 game one, and I had to switch bowling balls. What I did was I used a gem on the left lane that was not hooking, and I used I used an uh, IQ tour, and I stood 50, like ten boards more left, and I was swinging the shot on one lane, and I ended up with a 256 game. So. Um, the point I'm making is uh, sometimes you have to use two different bowling balls or two different lanes, you know, in order to get comfortable, know your equipment, you know. 
I've done that many different times in league. I've used two different bowling balls, so I get it. I completely get it. I am in agreement. Amber, right now, that first frame, uh, and, and again, she buried it, left a 5-7, a very painful 5-7. She gets one, Hermie, right now with the 10-pin. After this frame, I'm going to come up with, the I'm going to give you the trivia question, not just come up with one. I'm going to say it, I believe, and I'm hoping that Tony will confirm this with me. That is Anthony Nevis, the camera person. Uh, $25 gift certificate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, here's your trivia question. And there's a bunch of people here, and last time I gave a Vixen's question, nobody got it. Uh-oh. Let's see if you guys get this one. A number of years ago, at an Unholy Alliance, it's been one of the rare times where three people that held, at one point or another, a World Championship Series title won the Unholy Alliance. I will give you the two guys, which were Miguel Acobo, who was a world champion, Northeast champion, and Alex Prell. Which vixen from the Wrecking Crew was the third member of that group? And who obviously, she has won the vixen's title. So again, the people that won the Unholy Alliance. You had Miguel Acobo, you had Alex Prell. What vixen, who has been a vixen's champion before, from the Wrecking Crew was the third member of that group. Let's see if you get that, Tynell. Do you think you have an answer? You don't have to say what the answer is, but do you think you know? I, I think I know. Okay, Tynell thinks he knows. We'll give you guys a game or two to figure it out. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should know this. They, they went unholy? They won unholy. They absolutely won unholy. They, they won in Holy because that was the first year and he got sort of plastered all over Facebook. So there's a hint. If you scroll back in time in the UB social media, you will definitely know the answer to that. So Amber right now looking to get on the board. That looks good to me. There's a strike. Yeah, that's, that's the shot she wants. She got down on the shot and she looked real comfortable. The form, it, it looked really good off her hand. And she's got to stay consistent and make those good shots and figure out that lane, you know. 33 is tricky too, but 33, you know, she she is more control. She has a more control. She controls her bowling ball more better on 33 um, because it, it is holding up on her. She doesn't have to worry about no early hook, you know. But now we're in game three right now, right? And 33 might start hooking a little early. Well, let's see if she figured out lane 33 too. Oh no, no, that one was too fast. That that. that that's what you don't want to do on 33 because they did. Like I said, the back end is um, is very wet. You know, very wet, dry back there. So it's it's, uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, that's the best the best thing right now for both players to do is to move right and just pipe it up 10. You know, with the right ball speed. Um, but um, it's tough to do that same thing on both lanes, and they're playing really different. Now let's see if she makes a spare here. That ball's cooked. That looks nice. Ooh, I thought she had that one. Uh, Larry McCollum, that is a good guess, but that is not right. It is not Faith Little. Faith Little was never part of the Wrecking Crew. So, not her. Glad we, I'm glad we got a guess in here. At least we got one. The, the last uh, trivia question that I had was solved very quickly. Um, the last Vixen question that I had that nobody got, the first female, the first welterweight champion who was a female won it at Battle Bowl. Who was she? I'm going to I'm gonna say it was Cheryl Mitchell. Not Cheryl Mitchell. It was Jessica DelVal. Well, Obviously, that is, that, is not the answer, that is not the answer to this question. No, no, no. Yeah. Cheryl Mitchell. She's a cruiserweight now, right? Uh, no, she's a welterweight. She actually has a chance to get to win that welterweight title. She's got a shot at it, and I, I believe that may be the next title match coming up for Julio Hernandez. Julio, you may have to confirm with me on that. I don't have the complete sheet in front of me. But but the trivia question that I'm asking, which Vixens champion from the Wrecking Crew won the Unholy Alliance with Miguel Acobo and Alex Prell? By the way, all, all three of them champions in their own right. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Maybe Tynell will win the $25 gift certificate eventually. I'll give, a, I'll give you guys a whole game to figure it out. And then if not, I'll ask Tynell to see if he's got the answer. So Hermie right now sort of playing around. Not playing around literally, but trying to find a consistent strike shot. 
she's sort of doing what Amber did, the, did in game two. Except again, you got two opens on Amber's side. That gives Hermie a little bit of leverage to play around with. It's just a spare. She's got to make. She got got to make the spares. The first frame, I know she left a five-seven, uh, makeable spare, but you know, not not the easiest spare, but it's very makeable. Um, she threw the ball great on thirty-four in the second frame. Let's see if she does the same thing. Get back in her comfort zone. Uh, like I said, just hope to carry. And if you don't, you know, just make the spare. You know, you got to make those spares. Hermie just has spares right now, so Amber is definitely still in the game. Well, Amber completely in game. She's a double away from getting right back into it. And oh my goodness. Oh, there it goes. That was very good. She, uh, I like the way she threw that ball. She threw it the same exact way. It, 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 it checked up on her a little bit, but she was able to get the carry and strike. So now she's got to control her ball speed on 33 and stay out of the middle. The middle is just too, it's too soupy. It's too, too much back end oil. And she needs to stay more right on uh, 33. Um, my personal opinion, I think she should have stayed with the, the ball, the original ball she used and stayed on 33 with that. Double here will cut the deficit down to under 10. She moved right, oh, there it is. Two in a row and now all of a sudden we got ourselves a game here. Maybe she's, uh, maybe she's air hustling right now. Because we are close to the to the to the lane, so she might she might have heard us, or whatever. Well, she could be watching the feed. She could. <laughs> I was I was gonna say we we've got over 60 people watching the feed right now. Sleva is like, there you go. Hey, it's, I've seen people do that. Uh, Leon, you've given me the absolute correct answer. The answer is Danielle Marino. Leon, you got it right. You should have made him say the first name. Should have, but. Say the first thing, yeah. Marino. There's a lot of Marinos. <laughs> now, I was gonna say that there's a lot of Marinos. Not not many uh, who have been Vixen's champion. I believe she's she's won the belt a number of times. Oh, uh, okay. Now now we got it. I did say it, but yes. Is that Leon Stone? Uh, Leon, is that Leon Stone? We'll see. Which Leon is that? <laughs> Leon goes, Tynell, you're welcome. <laughs> well, well, we'll see if that, yes, sir. All right, Leon Stone, congratulations, you got it. You got that, you got a $25 gift certificate coming in your direction. Go over to our Instagram page and give us your information and Tony will be coming over and that is a sloppy mess. The first strike from her means a sloppy mess, but it looks good to everybody. She tripped a 5-7. I don't know how that happened, but she tripped a 5-7 just now. Um, congratulations, Leon, $25 gift card. Like you said, Gordon said, uh, share your information. Uh, the Instagram page? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Instagram page, I believe our Instagram page is UBA Bowling. Yep, go to Instagram UBA Bowling, you will go get your $25 gift card. Hey, somebody finally got a Vixen's question, I'm happy now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now, going back to the Vixens match, and Amber right now with the strike here has a chance to take the lead in the game, and she gets it, that's buried. Yeah, Amber's feeling it right now. She's throwing the ball really well, especially on 34, 33. Um, she just gotta watch her speed on 33. You can't throw it too fast. And she's moved right on 33, so she's, she's moved right on 33 because uh, she's angling her shot and it's hitting the pocket very nice and she's carrying 34. She's put a little more speed. She doesn't move right on 34, but it was either for her, for her on 30, to strike on 34, it was either for her to move right or um, stay where she was at and just throw it a little faster and get it, get it through the heads. And that's exactly what she did. Uh, she scored it out a little bit here. Didn't, does not pay for it completely, one, two, eight. However, she was up by two. She's now down by one, assuming that she makes a spare. On this still one pin game, okay. it makes her, comes back from the depth, so to speak, acquits herself very nicely, at least in this game. Also forces Hermie to throw another strike here. Uh, Hermie throws a strike here in the seventh. She just puts, her, she puts herself up, uh, I believe, 11 pins. Uh, right now with the spare conversion, Amber's down one. Looking to make the spare her, that ball looks good, it is. Spare attempt by Amber, now pressure for the first time in a while, and certainly the first time in this match, this late in a game, 
Pressure now goes on to Hermie Hannibal. A double, you're right, she'll extend her lead. However, an open here, and Amber takes the lead. Big shot over here from Hermie going into seventh frame. Hermie up, by, up to zip. She would certainly love to take a 3-0 lead. She certainly would not want to put Amber back in this match. See what this ball does. Buried. Huge answer from the Hall of Famer. Yeah, Hermie, uh, she needed to an answer back uh, because, you know, late in the game for the first two games, she was getting a little sloppy with her shots. Probably, um, I don't know, trying some things out because she might have thought that she had the game out because she saw Amber struggling. But now um, there's no, uh, not this late in the game. There's no, there's no way you could be trying anything out right now. Uh, she needs to just continue to strike, make good shots and, so she can close the game out. Uh, she left a seven pin there. Yeah, and again, that, that five may have stood up also. How much of this, Tynell, do you think is her going, well, you know what, I'll try this, I'll try this, I'll try this. Oh, wait, Amber's here. Let's get down to business now. Now I actually have to throw. I can't putz around anymore. Yeah, she, she's really extra focused now in uh, making, the, making the shots. Um, I mean, Amber got to this to this stage, so we all know she's no slouch. So, um, you know, now she's striking. You know, she's feeling comfortable. She's striking. Um, she just needs breaks right now. She just needs to get the breaks that Hermie got um, in the first two games, and she'll she'll be she'll be good. Well, I hear something interesting, and again, that that non-strike here means, and Amber's got a lot of work to do, but here's what it means. Hermie goes out the door, if my math is correct, it's a 224. If Amber goes out the door, it is also a 224. So they both go out the door, it's a tie. That is correct. So first things first. Yeah, she didn't like that shot, and there's a reason for it. 4-6 up there. Yeah, she knew it. She The second that she threw the ball, she looked down, she saw she saw her foot, she saw her hands, and she gave the disgruntled body language look. Yeah, she's got to make one here, and then uh, she's going to finish back on this lane. She was perfect on this lane for three frames, the second, fourth, and sixth frame. So she just needs to convert, to just make this, get this one pin right now, um, throw a good shot on in the ninth frame, and then see what Hermie does in her ninth and tenth. Um, and see if you can kind of run her down. But, um, you know, like you said, frames are running out, so um, she definitely needs a strike here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. This ball that comes out has got to put any sort of pressure on Hermie. This ball's got to be a strike. She, again, because if she goes out, if she strikes out now to 201, that means Hermie does have to throw two marks in the ninth and 10th frame. So, yeah, ball must be strike here at this point. Let's see what she does. As we go into ninth frame, game two, that ball looks a little bit high, and she's going to pay for it. Six, seven, ten. Tynell, she she was locked on both lanes for a couple of frames. What happened? Yeah, the transition is happening, um, and you know she her speed was a little bit off on that. So it's just something that I mean. Hopefully, she'll watch this video and. Uh, learn learn a little bit about you know about how the lanes are playing this way it'll just make her sharper you know uh, with her ball speed watching her watching her break point um, everything it seems okay you know her form her form is good it's just the lanes are playing different so she's probably not used to just playing lanes like this um, so it's a learning experience for her it's a learning experience and, and just to get to this point you know, it takes a lot of wins, takes a lot of guts. Not everybody gets to this level. So she's got to at least give herself that own positive reinforcement saying, hey, you know what, I've gotten to this point, I can get back to this point. And as you said, she's gonna learn from this and hopefully it's there. We say it looks like the match is over. The match is not over. I mean, she's got a long road to travel. It's been traveled before and I actually could use this as another trivia question for something else, but I'm not gonna say that just quite yet. So I welcome Alyssa Burke. Hey, Alyssa, right now it is game three, and Hermie is about to go up three zip on this. The best Amber can do is a 179, and I think Hermie's got a 169 with count at this point. I'm sorry, 173, so seven's a win. Actually, even less than that. Four's a win. Four's a win, yeah. 
This shot here is for game three. And there it is. A big, another win for the Staten Island Hall of Famer in this game. She will now be up three games to nothing. And you know, Hall of Famers do this. They figure out these lanes have not been easy. If, if people are going in th thinking, well, you know, I don't, I don't get this, the scores are low. These lanes have been tough today, don't you think? Yeah, they're, they're very tough. I mean, Hermie's been, Hermie's pretty much been in the driver's seat uh, throughout, you know, the whole, the whole match. Um, so she really, she, Amber really hasn't put, this the first couple of, first couple of frames uh, where Amber looked really well, uh, put a little pressure on Hermie. She went spare double. Uh, but ever since then, um, Hermie really hasn't had any pressure on her uh, up until like maybe the sixth frame when Amber did throw a triple. Um, then just Amber just lost lost control with her speed, uh, threw two splits, and um, Hermie's just close. She had a clean game. She just she just went 203 clean. So that's what it is. It's about staying clean, you know, making your spares. Uh, the only time Amber's throwing splits is because of her speed. Um, so uh, she's gonna it's gonna be real tough to just win four in a row. Um, she just needs she just needs some breaks. Just try to try to throw better shots and watch her speed. It's always tough winning four in a row. It's more tough winning four in a row when you're down 3-0 and all of a sudden everything's there. There's the shot right there that Amber had. However, in this game, it is too little too late at this point. That being said, she's got to figure it out. She's got a game four. I mean, there's four games left. This match is not over. There are four games left. That being said, she needs to win all four of them. Margin of error that she's got is zero. Or in the words of Jonathan Dansbury, El Cheapo. That being said, the best way to do it, one game at a time. That's how you got to play. You got to look at it as one game at a time. And if Amber, again, can just consistently, she's found pieces of it this game. She just now has to be consistent on it. And again, as you said, she'll she'll figure it out. If, if not now, when she watches this video and looks at it, she'll figure it out at that point. So when again, her game's gotten better. Now it's just, she's gotta be consistent and she's gotta stay away from a bad shot and then paying for the bad shot. She threw a couple good shots early and you know, she left a 5-7. She could have gotten down on that, she did. And she took the lead in this game. And then she just, the ball just got away from her and the game just got away from her. At the end of game three, Hermie Hannibal 203. Amber Milan 169, Hermie Hannibal up three zip. There's four games left. Amber must win them all. Hermie wins one game. She retains the title. So for everybody that just came in, hello, everybody. People are wondering, where is Daphne Smith? This is Daphne Smith is the Southeast Vixens champion. This is a Northeast Vixens champion match. Your Northeast Vixens champion, Hermie Hannibal, is defending against Amber Milan. And it's funny somebody mentions Daphne Smith. I know one of the things that Hermie would love to do is to be the Vixens champion going into Battle Bowl and possibly going after Daphne Smith, and those are just hits that that's unfair. Yeah, that, that was just a good break. A lot of pin action, so she's, she's, got, a, she's got a big break. That, that's all it is. It wasn't the best shot, but, you know, it worked out in her favor. All right, Gordon, bring on the trivia. Well, well, I already brought on the trivia uh, to start game, game three, but I'll just ask the trivia question again, see if you know it. You don't win anything for it because we already got the answer. But, Mia, here's the question. One of the rare times that the Unholy Alliance was won by three people that held on to a World Championship Series title is Miguel Acobo, Alex Prell, and what Vixen who won it when she was and still is on the Wrecking Crew. So what Wrecking Crew Vixen's champion won the Unholy Alliance with Alex Prell and Miguel Acobo? So I'll see Mia if you have the answer to that. If, they get, if this get, does go on to a game five, I will appeal to Anthony and see if we have enough uh, for another tr for another gift card. I'll appeal, we're not there yet. Anthony's giving me the, let's see if we get to a game five look. Amber right now, in order to help that out, we'll need to make the spare, and she does. I have a good trivia question. Oh, Tynell's got a trivia question. I just don't know, uh, I, I think I know the answer to my own trivia question. <laughs> if you don't know the answer to your own trivia question, that may not be a good trivia question. I, I, I believe I know the answer. Uh, yes, the, that, that, that will be the correct answer. 
Chris, except the only problem is that you're, you're a game late. But yes, it's, it is Danielle Marino. That is the correct answer. But again, well, I, I got some more trivia here, but Tynell's got a trivia question. This isn't worth anything. We're just playing this one for fun seats. But Tynell, what's the question? Uh, who were the very first uh, Vixens and heavyweight duo to win championship at the same time and hold the title at the same time? The first Vix the, a Vixens champ and a heavyweight champ on the same team. The same UBA franchise. They held the, the first ones that held the title, it was on the same team. I know the answer to this one. That is a very good trivia question. I know the answer to this, and I'll give a little, I'll, I'll give a hint here. G give, a, give a little bit of a hint. Brian Shaw may know the answer to this, or at least closer than what other people do, because I know the region that Brian Shaw is in. That's the only hint that I'm giving. Brian Shaw, right there, who wants to know where Daphne is. That, that, that's the little hinty. I believe it's just, if it's the same Brian Shaw, if it's not, I just lured everyone into a wild goose chase. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's from Brooklyn, then it's the wrong Brian Shaw. So, no, I'll, I'll give you the hit, not Brooklyn. Okay. But, but, but hit, not Brooklyn. If, if, it's, if it's who I believe it is. Because I do know one team. Yeah, Hermie's playing really straight now. Yep. And uh, he's just making sure she can the head and, and, and leave makeable space. Yeah, well, you know, Hermie was, I don't want to say playing around, but playing around first three games. Now all of a sudden she found something and now her, in her mind, uh, and now her mind, she's going, nah, I, I, think it, I think it's that time. That, that, would be what, that would be what I was thinking of. Just making sure. Yeah. Yes. The, theoretically, the, theoretically, it's happened twice. Once in the north, once in the south. However, the first time it's happened is in the north. Wow, that ball went a long way. They, 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 yeah, 34 is like completely, completely toast. Um, you know, it's very, very, it's going to be very difficult to get through the heads. Um, I, man, I just want Amber to just move right, man. Just yeah. put, play up 10. I just want to, I just want to see if I'm right. You know, because the, the styles, the style that for, from both Hermie and and Amber are pretty much similar. They're both down and in. Yes. They're not cranker. They're little tweeners. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just think that up 10 with a little more length, it's just going to work for her. You know, I because it's, to continue to still try to fight the heads, it's not. You're not going to leave makeable space. You know. I agree. I mean, we've we've seen it during this game. She's had Amber has had streaks of okay, this is what I'm doing. In two of the three games, Amber had the lead. In two of the three games, she just again, and and it's just going to be a matter of experience for Amber. And when she gets back up here, and I, and I'll say when because she's too good not to. I. But when she gets back up here again, she's going to be good, and I'm she's going to take this experience with her. And you know, I, part of me is saying she's. I don't want to say she's going to put on a better showing because she's put on a very good showing now. It's just clearing out the inconsistencies and just being more consistent in terms of her shooting. But <laughs> well, interesting. But no. Well, not only was it not at the same time, they also did not win the. Um... But no, you're right. It, not at the same time and not first. So the, the, the interesting thing, I, I'm not going to say uh, who's, who's giving us the uh, things here. The interesting thing here, in terms of the trivia, is I sort of feel like I want to give a hint on the southeast side. But I'm not going to yet. But I, I will say this in the southeast, and the reason why I know this from the southeast was when I was working the World Championship Series, uh, the two people that had it at the exact time, you know what, I will give a hint on this. From the southeast, and again, that's not the answer because the answer was the northeast. From the southeast, they were husband and wife that won the titles at the same time. 
So there, there, there is a little, um, shall we say, hint that I'm giving out there. Uh, Larry McCulloch, Herminator, the Terminator, and Terminator. Well, de she's definitely an Intimidator at this point. Front three and a spare. Ah, uh, some of these guesses that we're, that we're getting are interesting, and I'm that, that one I'm not going to mention. Uh, no, Amanda and Dre, definitely not husband and wife, no. Um, unless there's something that neither Tynell nor I know. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I know about that one. Um, and, th and that's also Southeast, not Northeast. Yeah. Well, actually, no, Southeast was husband and wife. The, 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 the question that Tynell had was the Northeast. Yeah, to those who are wondering about what we're discussing as far as the trivia, I'm getting messages, uh, I'm getting text messages uh, with, with answers, and uh, they're good answers, but they're the wrong ones. Um, oh, Amber, good shot. So she's closing her frames. You know, Hermes just uh, opened up with a triple, um, but Amber's closing her frames. Um, that's what she could, could, that's what she has to continue to do. Um, and you know the strikes will come. She still she keep throwing good shots. You know they'll come. Yeah, no, we're we're not laughing at the bowling whatsoever. Amber Amber again is throwing really really good, really really well. Some of the answers are are laughter causing in terms of the trivia. You know Amber is bowling a very good game. As Tynell saying she's not getting the carry. And I'll also say this: she is not far away from coming back here, learning what she learned, and go. You know what? I'm taking that Vixens title. There's five frames in. She's down 27. Hermie strikes, it makes it 37, but uh, like I said, uh, Hermie, two out of the, the three games, uh, has slowed down in the later frame, so anything is possible. Oh, Amber just used, what is that? Is that a, uh, oh, man. Oh, that's a nice shot right there. Now she's nodding her head up and down going, where has that been? Where is that bowling ball down? Uh, you say this, and, and Ty, as you said it, it's, this game's not over. It's only 27 pins. Hermie, Hermie can either make this over or make this interesting, depending on what she does in the sixth frame. So Hannibal right now throwing the shot, looking for a double. Ooh, that's a little bit tight. Tight, high, and good. Double from Hermie, and she goes, no, we're not making this interesting. Hermie does not want to make this interesting. Uh, Levi, okay, Amber, yep, absolutely. I think the uh, the ball change Amber made on 33 um, looks like something that's a little more uh, clean. It's early roll, and it's something you really need because you need something that that's going to give you that turn in the back end. Uh, Hermie's not making it easy at all as she's on 279 pace, uh, Amber on 242 pace. Um, like anything could happen. Yeah, well, Chris Chris Harris said it earlier at the end of game one. You bring something clean, use something clean. And I think maybe Amber should have been, well, nothing that she could do, whether or not she was or was not listening to this. But it looks like now she is. Yeah, now she's um, she's using... Uh, now yeah, Levi, I just mentioned it. Chris definitely said that earlier. Yeah, he did say that earlier. And then now uh, Amber's going with something more polished on the right lane so she can get through the heads. Look like a shot. Not yeah. That's all she wants. Um, it's just at the last second the ball is hooking. So it's really, she really has, she really has no room for errors. Maybe like a five board error. She can't really make too much errors, uh, especially on on lane 34. That's been giving both bowlers trouble uh, ever since game one. Well, the key for Amber's just been the consistency. She's had the right ball. She's had the right shot. She's shown flashes. Oh, brilliance. It's just a matter of being consistent here. Uh, not maybe, ah, uh, not make the spare. It's, it's just a matter of the consistency. But again, as you said, she's going to go through this. She, she's going to learn a lot about this. And you're right. These lanes have been very tough. It took four games for Hermie to figure it out. But it finally looks like she's going to figure it out. And if she goes out the door, it's going to be a 279. Amber, Amber needs a lot of help here, I mean, from Hermie. Uh, but she has to do her job, too, you know. Yeah, well, there's that same clean ball. That ball looks good. And again, she's just not getting the carry that Hermie has. There's a five pin. 
Now, in the UBA situation like this, if you miss a five pin, you based on the team, you're going to get powdered. I don't see her missing a five pin. She's been throwing the ball way too good for that, so uh, we're not even going to bother with that. But no, I mean, Amber's been throwing the ball good. She just has not gotten the carry. She has not gotten the results. And part of the problem, and especially against Hermie, if you're giving Hermie a game or a half game where she has a chance to figure stuff out, the results are going to be what you're going to see in game four, and that's usually fatal. And this time around, no exception to the fatality here, even though I'm going to wonder what was that. Yeah, very high, four pin. Got, got away with it. Six pin. I'm sorry, six pin. I'm looking at the frame, frame in the reverse again. And the reverse I'm looking at, it's a four pin on the reverse. But you're right, it's a six pin over here. So just in case people look at the video and go, Gordon, it's a six pin. Yes, I know it's a six pin. Uh, Mary, Chris Aponte and Tiffany Smalls. Uh, no, they have held to the belt, but not at the same time. And also, they were not the first ones to do it. I don't think they were on the same team. And they were not on the same team when that happened, that is correct. Chris Aponte uh, on exit wounds, won the most recent uh, stint. He was there, then Tiffany's first title was when she was on the takeover, so you're correct, not on the same team. And she still is on the takeover. So Alex Vargas and the line. And uh, well, no, we're not. We, we still have some uh, answers to give out here, but uh, we are near the end of the game, so you want to give the answer, Ty, now? Um, yes, I will give the answer. The answer to the trivia question, uh, which two members, what, which members of the same UBA franchise held the Vixens and the, and the heavyweight, Northeast heavyweight title at the same time was Brian Zizek and Shannon Sellens. Both? Both from, from some team in Long Island called the Rounders. That, that is old, old, old school, but that is the first group to do it in the Northeast. That is correct. So, and, and we're almost done here. And again, valiant effort by, by Amber Milan today, but she just ran into a buzzsaw. And, you know, she, she, she's learning stuff now. She'll be ready for the next matchup here. But, you know what? This is, this is the World Championship Series. This is sometimes how these things go in terms of a Vixens match. But this also shows the dominance of Hermie Hannibal. Yeah, one of the things that I could say about every single title holder in the World Championship Series, especially up in the Northeast, they, they didn't get here by accident. They're all really good, and it's going to take a very big effort to beat them. So, and, and you know what, Amber right now with the 10 pin, as she finishes out her 10th frame. Amber again will finish in the 170s area, and again, the Whitestone is just hard today. There is, and before we had this game from Hermie, I don't think there was a game that broke a 2 team. That be correct? I'm sorry, repeat that. I was, I was gonna say in this match uh, before the 279, or I should say the two, uh, anything that Hermie's gonna throw, and that will be the high game of this set. I don't think there was anything higher than a 2 team thrown by either person in the set. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, that's correct. Uh, Hermie went 2-0, 2-0. Uh, the last and 193. 190, yeah. So she's in the 220s right now. Uh, if she marks, she's in the 230s. So. Uh, all right, Amber's going to finish out with 180. Uh, solid effort by Amber. She just didn't uh, didn't read the lanes properly. She didn't, between that, not getting the carry, and her ball speed, that, that pretty much was a factor for her not not to uh, not to look like uh, she was comfortable and and to, to throw doubles. I mean, she closed her frames. She threw splits at the wrong time. Um, but Hermie just, uh, you know, she throws doubles, makes her flame, her, her spares. Uh, she continues to be dominant. Like I think she only has like two opens the whole the whole night. The whole night. Uh, she did. Yeah, you're absolutely right. She only had two opens. And King and Levi Johnson are both absolutely right. Uh, this is not a failure, it is a learning moment. This is how you get experience. You know, none of us 
come out here beginning shooting 300s, your first game of bowling. None of us the first time in the WCS uh, get your wins. There's always some sort of learning experience that you have, and they have one here. So Amber, I'm sure, will be back. The other thing that Amber can be proud of, every game that she bowled, each game was better than the one before it. So she got better and better and better as the match continued. So nothing bad to say about Amber, valiant effort. However, it is the Herminator, and Hermie does what she does. At the end of game four, the Herminator, 235, Amber Milan, 180. Hermie wins four games to none. And now, Tynal, you want to chat with Hermie, or would you like me to do it? Uh, you can you can do it. Um, you're, you're the you're the you're the expert. <laughs> All right, I'll be coming up there momentarily. Ready? All right. All right, Mademoiselle. Jordan. I've got something for you, and it's still staying over here. We're gonna go up here. So I, I am here once again, Hermie Hannibal. Uh, you kept up with the young people again. Yes, I tried very hard. At first I was playing musical balls. I'm like, oh my God, why stone is tough? But eventually I pick up the Zen Soul and that did it work. Yeah, it, it seemed like both of you were struggling really on the lanes. Neither of you really had a handhold. Now, it, it almost seemed like you know, at the beginning, when Amber was making opens, you're like, ah, I just got to make my marks, got to make my marks, got to make my marks. Game four comes around, and all of a sudden, that light bulb clicked in. Is it because you found something? Is it because all of a sudden, Amber was, Amber was pushing you, or a little bit of both? I said I want to go home. That's what it was. <laughs> you bowled enough today. It is time to go home. Go home, because I bowled in the season match earlier. So now it's time to go home. So, um... So, quite, so uh, next question for you. Um, so you bowled a couple of games before you came over here. How much of that was a factor? Oh, I, to me, when I bowled before the match, I bowled much better. Instead of coming from home and coming to bowl, it's kind of different. So it makes, it makes me um, more energetic to bowl. Um, last question, because I know you want to go home. And probably so does the camera guy. Any questions, comments, anything you want to say, any shout outs? Oh, shout out to my daughter as, and Curtis, my balls. And thank you, VA. Congratulations again, Hermie Hannibal.